Well, happy Thursday morning, everybody. Today, we're looking at a story in 1 Samuel 24 that is fairly well known by people who've studied the Bible and been in church quite a bit. It's the story of David and his men hiding in the inner recesses of a cave. And while Saul and his men were looking for David, Saul goes into the to part of that cave to relieve himself. And so it was a great opportunity for David to kill him. And David does not. It's a well-known story. And what spoke to me in this chapter and in this story is who do we listen to? Uh, the voices uh, of, of people who are trying to get us to do something that on one level may make sense, but isn't what God wants. Or we listen to the truth of God and the voice of God, the word of God. Um, David, as I said, had the opportunity to kill Saul while he was in that cave, relieving himself, and his men encouraged him to do it. Look with me in chapter 24, starting at verse 2. Uh, chapter 24, uh, verse 2. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men in front of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds on the way, and there was a cave. And Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the, in the inner recesses of the cave. And the men of David said to him, Behold, this is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I am about to give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. Then David arose, and he cut off the edge of Saul's robe secretly, like taking off a jacket and laying it over out of the way. David snuck up there, and he cut part of that off while Saul was doing his business. Um, continuing in verse 5, And it came about afterward that David's conscience bothered him because he had cut off the edge of Saul's robe. So he said to his men, For be it from me, because of the Lord, that I should do this thing to my Lord, to Saul, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him, since he is the Lord's anointed. Verse 7, And David persuaded his men with these words, and did not allow them to rise up against Saul. And Saul arose and left the cave and went on his way. And then David comes out of the cave and shouts down at Saul and they have a conversation. So here were David's men really trying to encourage him, even using spiritual language, encouraging him to kill or let them kill Saul. And David said, no, there's a higher principle here. It's the principle that you don't, you don't touch God's anointed. And so he wouldn't do it. Now Saul, on the other hand, in chapter 24, verses 8 through 10, uh, says, afterward, David arose and went out of the cave and called after Saul, saying, My Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and prostrated himself. That's, that's, that's some humility. And David said to Saul in verse 9, Why do you listen to the words of men? Saying, Behold, David seeks to harm you. People are trying to tell you all these bad things about me. Why do you listen to them? Verse 10, Behold, this day your eyes have seen that the Lord had given you into my hand in the cave. And some said to kill you. People with me told me to kill you. But my eye had pity on you. And I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. So David did not listen to the people who were trying to get him to kill Saul, who was trying to kill him. He listened to the Lord instead. Saul listened to everybody who said anything bad about David. Um, people fed his suspicion of David, his anger and jealousy of David. They fed it and he listened to it. Be careful who you listen to. Be very, 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 very careful who you listen to. Some other things. God's wisdom and man's wisdom are not always the same. Our emotions and what can make sense to us on one level may actually be wrong and contrary to God's truth and God's word. We need to work hard at knowing the truth of Scripture, the principles of Scripture and how it applies to life so we can make wise 
decisions. That's why reading scripture is so important. And, and please don't hear this the wrong way. You need more than short, shallow devotions. You need more than positive thoughts, self-help stuff that you tape to your mirror and recite to yourself every day about how great you are and how loved you are. And you, I, I'm not criticizing those, but I'm saying if that's what you have, and that's it. Oh, you, you don't have all the foundational truth of God speaking into your life when life gets hard or when you're having to make critical decisions. You need a systematic plan for reading the God, God's word. Not Well, one day I read this verse and this passage and another day I read another verse and another passage. That's why we have this Bible reading plan and, 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 and it is systematic. That's why we do our D groups the way we do. Because you, this is how you get the wisdom of God. This is how you get the wisdom of God. And we all need his wisdom. And we need his word. So thank you for watching this devotion. And stay with it. Don't you ever quit. And listen, if you've been doing it for a while and you say, well, you know, we've read Colossians before. Why are we reading Colossians again? Because we need to read God's word over and over and over. Because every time we do, we will get something new from it. You want to be wise like David? Keep reading God's word in a systematic way. Hey, God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.